It's a cozy fall day here in western Wisconsin and I thought it'd be a great time to sit down and chat about the knitting I've been working on. My name is Anna, aka Brooke Willow, and I have a classic style knitting podcast for you today. Um, I have a lot to share. I have three and a half knit finish objects, a sewing finish object, and a few different whips as well. So let's just jump right into it. My first finish object for you today is what I'm wearing here, and this is the only sewing content for this video. I promise the rest will be knitting, um, but this is the Nepheline blouse by Vivian Shao Chen, um, and I finished it about two weeks ago, and I think this is like my fourth or fifth time wearing it already. I have actually made this blouse once before. I made the version that has a ruffle neckline. So each of these, there's two different versions. There's a ruffle neckline and a non-ruffle neckline and I wanted to make one of each. And I'm sure I'm gonna make more in the future as well because I really do love this blouse pattern. This pattern comes in a bust circumference size range of 81 centimeters to 152 centimeters. I will put all of my measurements in the description box below if you need to compare for like sizing reasons. Um, but with my measurements, it came out to be a size 5, but I ended up actually making a size 6 for both versions. I do think I could go down a size. Um, I always have this fear that I'm going to make something a little too small and I think especially with sewing because once you cut that fabric you can't really get it back whereas knitting you can always rip out the yarn and then re-knit it so I always tend to go up a size but after making this blouse twice I think it's safe to assume that I can go down a size. This is an oversized blouse um, and I do like things very oversized, but I think even for me, I don't need this to have quite as much positive ease as I made it. <laughs> Another sizing reason why I want to go down is because of the neckline right here. Um, you can see it's like very wide scoop neck and that kind of limits the types of bras that I can wear because all of my straps come up like right here and for me personally I don't really like to show my bra straps so for this particular blouse I kind of am limited to just wearing a strapless bra which isn't my favorite I like to have options of having support <laughs> so if and when I make this again I will go down a size and I might bring in this neckline just a little bit closer to my neck the fabric that I made this was thrifted fabric that I got from a thrift shop in South Dakota. Um, and I think it's like a woven cotton canvassy, like a very light canvas material. It didn't really say what it was, but I was immediately drawn to this plaid print on it. It's the exact kind of vibe and everything that I'm pinning on Pinterest for this season. So I was so excited when I found this fabric. And it was originally $15 for two yards of it, but the, everything was 50% off in that store that day. Um, so I got two yards of fabric for $7, which was incredible find. And now I have a beautiful blouse from it. <laughs> And then the buttons that I decided to go with, I thrifted from a shop in St. Paul, Minnesota called Art Scraps. It's kind of what it sounds like. It's a thrift shop where you bring all of your leftover craft supplies or whatever, um, and you can find some cool treasures in there. They have a lot of yarn in there as well, but a lot of it's like acrylic yarn, um, and like it looks really old. <laughs> 
but they have a ton of buttons so I ended up buying a lot of different sets of buttons. This particular set came in um, a pack of four and it was only 50 cents so quite a steal there. So if you're in the area I highly recommend checking out Art Scraps in St. Paul because that's a really cool store. This blouse was kind of inspired by a shirt from Shop Doen, and I've been styling it the same way that they style it. Basically, I tuck it into some dark wash denim jeans and a black belt, and it's just kind of a perfect fall staple outfit. Um, and like I said, I've been wearing it a ton. It kind of is nice it can flow from like casual to a little bit more dressy for work with no problem and that's how I've been able to get a lot of wear out of it um, I really like these pin tuck sleeves I know I've talked about these when I made the other version of this blouse but it just adds a really cool detail and I like the way that the sleeves are shaped and I like that they're not all the way down to my arms, especially since they're kind of a big billowy sleeve. If they were down by my wrist, I think that would just get in the way. They cut off at a flattering point of my wrist, and I'm really happy with it. Moving on to the beloved knitting portion of the episode, I have a finished object that's been a year in the making, and that is the Night Shift Shawl by Andrea Maori. Um, if you've been following along with me for the past year, you have known about this shawl. I spun my own yarn. It's actually the reason why I ended up getting a spinning wheel because I didn't want to spend the money on spin cycle. Uh, so I thought it'd be a good investment to get a wheel and then spin my own yarn. And it did end up being less expensive than what was called for with the original yarn. Um, but all that aside, I absolutely love the way this turned out. Um, it was such a fun pattern to knit up. I am now just in love with mosaic knitting and I'm excited to work on future mosaic knitting projects as well. One that I'll show you a little bit later on. Um, but let's talk about the yarn. So like I mentioned, I spun this yarn myself. I used six different colorways for it, and I got the fiber from Hello Yarns Monthly Fiber Subscription Club. So I was signed up for eight months, and I picked and chose the colors that I thought would flow together with this. There's a couple that I ended up leaving out because they were just a little too pastel and wouldn't really work with the whole vibe of this. Um, but I'm very happy with how each and every one turned out and I think I learned so much about spinning on a wheel from working on this project. The way that I spun this yarn was a fractal three ply and the reason why I went with three ply is because I wanted the colors to blend a little bit more together and not come out stripey. I was worried about it being too stripey. And I'm pretty sure I checked and that Dream State Spin Cycle is also a three ply. So I wanted to mimic that as much as I can. And at the same time, I wanted to create like a worsted weight yarn, which I was able to do. The only modification I made with this was when Casey from Young Folk Knits gave me the advice to add a little bit of length to it if I had extra yarn, and when Casey gives you advice, you listen. <laughs> At least that's what I did. Um, I actually didn't have a ton of yarn left over. Um, I just really had this little strip along here left. so. I thought about maybe spinning some more yarn, but I also just kind of wanted to finish this and wear it. Um, the funny thing is, I ended up measuring my shawl next to the sample, or what the sample called for, and it was supposed to be 65 inches, and with this little extra bit that I added on, um, 
mine ended up being exactly 65 inches. So it's good that I added a little bit because now it's at the correct size that it's supposed to be. But I still wish I could have a little bit more length to it. And the reason being is because I want it to be able to stay on my shoulders a little bit easier. It does a pretty good job. Um, so basically how I've been styling it is I take one corner here and I kind of throw it over my shoulder. And then I take this side and wrap it all the way around like this. And it does a pretty good job staying on, like I said, but if I had just like a little more length to it, it would just be like very secure. <laughs> but this I can still get by very just fine. This has been such a fun piece to wear, especially to work, because I feel like chic wearing this, um, which is like a plain long sleeve shirt underneath. Um, and at the same time, it feels like I'm just wearing a blanket. So I will take any chance I can get to be able to wear a blanket to work for the day, um, especially because my job, I sell fireplaces, so it's just like a very cozy environment being surrounded by fireplaces, and this just really like seals the deal with creating a nice atmosphere for the customers that come in. My next finished object is one that I cast on last April, and I was finally able to finish a couple weeks ago, and that is the Berries and Bird Track Socks by Yoko Takahashi. This sock pattern is in Lina's 52 Weeks of Socks Volume 2, and it is the first pair that I knit up from that book. So I ended up pre-ordering it um, for a different pair of socks that I saw, but then I saw these in the book and I knew these are the first ones that I wanted to make, especially because I had just bought this sock yarn from my local yarn shop and I wanted to use it right away. And I thought this cabling would be a beautiful way to showcase the yarn, especially because it's almost a solid color. It has like the slightest bit of variation in it, so I think it would be considered a tonal, but it's almost solid. And the yarn that I used is Life in the Long Grass. They're, they have like a yak based sock yarn. It's called the Earth Yak Merino Sock, and it is 70% merino, 20% yak, and 10% nylon, which makes an excellent sock yarn, if you ask me. Um, this yarn is so very soft. I've worn it once before I actually blocked it, and then I blocked it so I can show it off all pretty for this. Um, and they were just very luxurious to wear with my Birkenst Birkenstocks. I always say Birkenstocks because I call these Birkenstocks. <laughs> um, but what a lovely way to just have some beautiful socks showcase because like with boots most of it gets hidden but with the Birkenstocks you can see almost the whole thing. <laughs> Very granola of me to wear it that way but I love it. This is a toe-up construction using a heel flap and gusset which was the first time I used that technique for a heel and I love the way it looks and I love the way that it fits on my foot. So it's definitely a construction that I will be excited about if other knitting patterns that I want to make have it in it. This pattern uses a cable chart, which I prefer to work with a chart rather than written instructions because I'm very like a visual learner and a visual follower, I guess. Um, it was a little difficult at times to keep track of where I was in the chart because there's one chart for the side cabling and then another chart for the cabling down the middle. So they do eventually meet up, but not until like the 20 row mark for the middle cable down the middle. So you really have to pay attention to where you're at. And that was kind of difficult for me because like I mentioned, I started these in April. So as you can imagine, I stopped a lot um, and picked up weeks later and I never knew where I was at <laughs> in the chart. I'm sure there's a couple mistakes throughout here, but it's a pretty busy pattern that I don't think anyone's going to be able to tell. And they're socks, so it's not like that big of a deal. <laughs> 
Um, this comes in three different sizes that have a foot circumference of 15.5 to 20 centimeter. I made the second size and I think they fit like a dream. <laughs> Once I completed these socks, it kind of like reignited my sock mojo. Um, I think also because of the time of year we're at, I can finally start wearing socks again. So I ended up making another pair of socks that no one has even seen unless you follow me on Instagram because I just posted it yesterday. But um, I like haven't even started making these since the last time I podcasted. And that is the Dulcimer Socks by Lindsay Fowler. These are the socks that Lina posted that made me pre-order the book. <laughs> the moment I saw these, I'm like, oh my gosh, these are the coolest socks I've ever seen and I absolutely have to make them. So that's why I made them. <laughs> I just thought like there were so many interesting aspects going on with this that it looked like such a fun pair of socks to make and that's what the case ended up being. I already know that I want to make another pair, like a more winter inspired pair using maybe like blues and grays and whites. Um, but for this pair, I wanted like a very classic fall sock and so I was very intentional about the colors that I used to make this. These also come in three sizes. The foot circumference ranges from 20 to 25 centimeters. I made the middle size again but I do think I may be able to go down a size. It's a little bit loose in the ankle but not to the point where it falls down my foot by any means but I usually like my ankles to be like very tight and secure. And these are just a little bit looser, but still fit very nice. There were several different um, techniques used in these socks. The first one being the Latvian braid, which is the first time I've ever done a Latvian braid. And they're really fun to make. They're definitely a lot easier than they look. Um, Mine aren't perfect by any means, <laughs> but I think they're good enough for a pair of socks. And then I did like a vertical crochet chain through the ankle area, which was also a very fun construction. And then again, a heel flap and gusset for the heel. So this was like super engaging and it was really nice because you get all of like the complicated stuff out of the way at first and then it's just stock and net for the rest of the foot. So kind of smooth sailing at the end. Um, I knit these two at a time, which is how I knit all of my socks now because that eliminates the whole second sock syndrome and that has been a very successful thing for me. It takes a little time to get used to doing it, especially when you get to like a heel portion of the foot, but once you learn how to do it, it's I, I highly recommend it. I feel like I knit socks a lot faster doing two at a time than just one at a time. The yarn that I used to make these were all scraps from previous projects. Um, the first main color is from Positive Ease and it's their Pure Moreno base in the colorway Sepia. Um, I don't know if this is like technically a sock yarn, but it does have a very high twist, so it will be durable to wear as socks. And then um, the green contrast color here is Leftover Yarn. It's Knit Pick Stroll in the colorway Forest Heather. These were left over from another pair of socks. And then the dark red that you see here is Biche Bouche Le Petit Lamb's Wool in very dark red, I think is the colorway. And this was left over from a sweater that I made. It's definitely not meant for sock yarn, but since it's just in the ankles and it's not like on the heels or the toes, I figured it would be fine for the sock. And I just love how all three of these colors came together. It surprisingly took a long time to mix and match all the colors that I had in my stash, but once I put these together, it just felt like a no-brainer and I love them so much and I feel like they're gonna go with every fall outfit that I have for this season. Those are all the finished objects that I have except for 
one that I'll show later. I'll explain that later. Um, but I have two uh, whips that I'm working on. The first one you have seen before if you've been following along, and that is the Rib Lace Raglan by James N. Watts. This was supposed to be a pre-fall knit for me, um, but now it's fall and it's still not done yet, but we still have pretty warm weather that I'll be able to get a lot of use out of this. And the reason why I say that it needs to be warmer weather is because this is knit with silk um, and cotton and not wool, but I still think it's gonna work nice in the winter, especially because I can layer underneath it. Um, but yeah, I have made this before. I actually test knit this pattern last summer um, and I did a short sleeve version. You can do short sleeve or long sleeve. And the one that I made last year, I love the color and I love the way it looks, but I think A, I wish I sized up um, and B, I wish I extended the length in the body. It's just a little more cropped than I want it to be. So when I was making this one, I did end up going up a size, which the size range for this pattern ranges from extra small to 5XL, which is equivalent to a bust circumference of 76 centimeters to 157.5 centimeters. When I first made it, I did an XL, and I remember my gauge swatch was like too big so I sized down a needle and I think that ended up lying to me because the whole thing ended up being a lot smaller than I wanted to be and didn't really match up the final measurements um so for this one I did the recommended needle size so I didn't size down my needles and I went up a size so I ended up making a 2xl it still looks kind of small to me, but I do think like once I block it out, it will grow quite a bit. Um, it'll be like kind of the perfect size for me. And then like I mentioned, I decided to make a long sleeve version of this. If I'm gonna make it again, it's fun to kind of switch it up, not only with the color, but also the construction. And I think it's going to create such a cute top. Um, the yarn that I used is Dando Silk Plus is the name of it in the colorway Angora 1. I ended up picking up this yarn from a local yarn shop spontaneously with no project in mind and I got five skeins of it so it's going to be just enough to make this sweater so it was kind of meant to be. The neckline at the top here is currently unfinished which is one of the options that James put in the pattern or he said that you can finish off using an I-cord edge. Um, I think what I'm going to do is wear it a few times, just leaving it unfinished and see how I like it. And if it just feels a little undone, then I'll go back through and apply that I-cord edge. Um, the reason why I don't wanna do it right away is because I remember when I made the one last year, I did the I-cord edge and I did it just a little too tight so I had to really squeeze it over my head. Um, and I know that I can intentionally try to make that edge a little bit looser, but it always ends up being tighter than I want it to be. So I'll see how it is without it. And I kind of like the way it looks. I know there's a few designers that have been putting out patterns lately with that kind of unfinished look at the edge. And I personally think that looks kind of cool, but again, I'll see how it is after wearing it a few times. I'm not gonna lie, this has become a little bit of a slog to finish, um, mostly because I'm just so excited to knit with wool again. I, I knit with silk this entire summer, and as much as I love working with silk, now that we're in the cooler seasons, it's fun to knit with wool again. <laughs> um, I have been enforcing Finish It Fridays. I think it's Roxanne Richardson who came up with that concept where basically you finish any, or you work on any languishing whips on Fridays. And that way the rest of the week you can knit whatever you want, but there's that one day of the week where you're catching up on other projects. Um, for me, I do not like having a lot of whips on the needles. I currently just have two, but I usually range from like one to at the very most four. 
I find that I get very stressed out if I have a lot of whips because it just kind of piles up in my mind. Similar to having like a messy house, I get stressed out if my house is messy, but the moment I clean it, I feel so much better. And that's the exact same way with my knitting too. And so doing the Finish It Friday has been a really good way for me to kind of stay on top of my whips. And I kind of feel like I've been pumping out a lot more finished objects. Not that that's the goal or anything, but when I'm knitting something, it's usually for the season we're in or the season we're about to be in. So I wanna be able to wear those items for the season. So this way, having less on the needles, I'm able to actually produce more garments that I want to wear, which also lessens the need for me to go out and buy clothing from stores. Not like there's anything wrong with that, but um, for me as a personal goal, like especially ever since I left the retail world, I've been trying to like make my own wardrobe and this helps me make a wardrobe that I can wear for the season. I'm excited to have this done. I definitely want the finished object. I already have quite a few different outfits planned in my head um, on how I would style this knit and so I'm excited to wear it. On the topic of styling knits, I just kind of had this idea in my head. Um, would you be interested if I made a video about styling different knits that I have? Or is that something that's kind of been overdone? I personally haven't really made a video yet like that. And I think it'd be kind of cool if I picked like three or four different garments and different ways I could style them. So let me know down below if that's something you'd be interested in because now that I think of it, it would be kind of a fun video to make. My next whip is one that I've been anticipating for a while and that is the Tessellated Pullover by Andrea Mowry. So this is where I'm at so far and as you can see, it is a bottom up construction. So let me face it the right way here. <laughs> Um, and yeah, we have the two by two rib at the very bottom and I have now moved into the mosaic knitting for the body, which like I said, I am loving the mosaic knitting. So it's really fun that I already get to make a project again using this technique. And I will say if, um, you're new to color work or you haven't done color work yet, but you're interested in doing color work, I really recommend working with a pattern that uses mosaic knitting because you're only working with one color at a time for each row. So it's really easy for yarn management and um, I think it's like a very good gateway into color work knitting. The moment I saw this pattern, I knew I wanted to make it. Um, this is Andrea Maury's Rhinebeck sweater for the year. I'm not going to be making it to Rhinebeck this year. It's definitely a dream of mine to attend, but at least I'll be making a sweater so I feel a little bit connected to everybody that is going out there. This pattern is available in a bust circumference of 86 centimeters to 175 centimeters. I am making size five, so the, the sizes go from one to 10, and I'm right in the middle. Um, I have made Andrew Maori's sweaters before, or just one in a size five, and that fit perfectly for me, so I know this is the right one for me to make this. I did knit a swatch for this, and I hit gauge on first try, which a lot of people say that Andrea Mari has a very tight gauge, so I wonder if that means I'm a tightener too. That kind of seems to be the trend for me. But yeah, I was able to get it right away, so I am using the recommended needle size uh, for this. And I'm using the recommended weight of yarn that was called for in this as well. So speaking of yarn, I can walk you through what I'm using, and I have talked about this in a previous podcast when I first bought it, but we'll go over it again. Um, this is Pearl Soho's Good Wool in the color Pine, I believe. Actually, it's in Dark Spruce is the color. 
I will say when I first bought this online, I kind of expected it to be a little bit darker, but when I got it in person, it kind of is leaning a little more emerald to me. On camera, it looks a little bit darker as well, but it did create kind of more of a golf green than I wanted, but I do still like the way it's looking. Um, I was thinking it kind of is giving me more spring vibes almost, but that means I can just wear it in the spring as well. One of the contrast colors I'm using in the pattern called for kind of like a hairy uh, yarn, so you could do mohair or surrey silk alpaca. I'm using Pearl Soho's Broom, which is 58% mohair, 25% wool, and 17% silk in the colorway Tawny Dune. I chose this color because I wanted it to warm everything up. Um, had I gone with like a more whitish or grayish color, I thought the colors would be a little too cold. Um, and like I said, I wanted to warm it all up. So that's why I went with this like tan color here. And then the color changing yarn that is called for is some more of my hand spun. This is Malabrigo's new bay in the colorway Corteza that was gifted to me by two different friends um, so I wanted to make something extra special using some fiber that they gifted me and I spun this fractal just two ply um, and it gave me a lot of yardage which was what I was going for compared to doing it three ply and I think it's working out perfect and I like the way that it kind of ranges from like a really dark almost maroon color into the very light purple. I think it's translating very nicely throughout this whole sweater pattern. I am having so much fun making this. It's a very easy pattern to memorize. It's very intuitive and I am just knitting away on it. <laughs> the next project I'm gonna show you is kind of a fail it's kind of a finished object, kind of a whip, kind of a fail, but also a success. <laughs> I'll just go ahead and show you. Um, this is what I have. This was supposed to be a hat or a beanie. I had um, some hand spun that I naturally dyed myself. I think it was actually the first skein of hand spun that I made on my wheel when I first got it. So there's a lot of like thick and thin, um, very rustic looking. <laughs> and then I naturally dyed it using Matter and Kutch when I was kind of going through a dyeing experiment. Um, but yeah, I had a skein left over and I was convinced that I was gonna have enough to make a hat. And this is how far I got before I ran out of yarn. But then I realized last night, um, it's kind of the perfect size to fit around the neck of one of my dogs uh, to make a little cobble for him. And it's super stretchy too, so it's not too tight around his neck or anything. Um, my dogs absolutely love wearing their cobbles, especially in the winter when we're going for walks. I think it just keeps their ears a little bit warmer. They like tuck their ears into it and it blocks the wind on their face. Um, it gets very cold and frigid here in Wisconsin in the winter time, so it's nice to protect them a little bit. And so they were due for a new cowl, and it all just worked out. <laughs> um, yeah, so I have been wanting a red hat uh, for a while now. Um, my personal TikTok al algorithm is telling me that like the deep cherry burgundy red is like all the rage this season and I am here for it. <laughs> so I really wanted a red beanie because I don't have one. Um, and at first I was really excited to work with this, but it's not even the shade of red that I really envisioned in my head. So it kind of worked out that it didn't work out. And now Kevin has a new cowl and he looks very handsome in it. That leads me into some new acquisitions that I have. Um, I ended up stopping at a kind of a yarn marketplace 
retreat type thing that the Minnesota Knitters Guild put on um, called Yarn Over. So I think it was like a whole weekend where they were doing classes and it was like, like I mentioned, like a retreat and you had to pay for all of that, but they had the marketplace open free to the public. So my friend Elena, who you've seen on this channel before, her and I decided, hey, let's just stop there and just look around. But of course, looking around leads to maybe buying some things and that's what I did. Not too much, but I do have some fun things to show you. I did go in with a mission. I wanted to buy some yarn to make that burgundy color hat that I have been wanting to make. And I also wanted to potentially buy some fiber to spin with because that's a great place to buy fiber. Um, because yarn shops don't really stock a ton of it, so I get a lot of my fiber to spin at little festivals like that. But I did immediately find some yarn to make the hat, and that is this right here. This is Blue Sky Fibers Woolstock North, which I think the, um, the salesperson said it was a new base for them, so they have Woolstock which I, might be like a worsted weight yarn, but this one is a super bulky weight yarn. And I am going to make the Manhattan hat out of this. I made this last year in like, uh, or no, it was this year in a sagey green, which is kind of perfect for spring. And now I want a fall version of it. And I just thought this is the perfect color. This is exactly what I was envisioning to make it in. Um, speaking of the color, this is called Cranberry Comp? Cranberry Compote? Compote? I don't know. <laughs> um, I am a little bit nervous that I'm going to not have enough yarn to make the Manhattan hat. I think it calls for a hundred 40 yards and this is only 107 yards but the hat calls for bulky weight and this is super bulky so I think what I'm going to do is make a an adult size small normally I'd be a medium but I'm going to make a small and go up a needle size because that way the gauge will be better and I think that might help me make the whole hat but at the marketplace they had a hat sample on display using one skein of this and it was like a full hat with ear flaps and they did a palm and they did it all in one skein so i feel like a beanie with just one folded brim will be enough so here's to hoping i have enough it does look like a lot of yarn so i think i'll be okay but i do want to get going on this right away i think i am going to cast it on today because I'm going camping next weekend up on the north shore of Lake Superior with a bunch of friends and I want to have a new beanie to wear up there because I will definitely need it. The mornings get very cold up there this time of year. Um, so that's the first thing that I bought. And then um, I looked at all the spinning fiber and the moment I came to this next booth, I saw this fiber and I knew I immediately had to have it. And that is these two braids right here. These are from Orchard Acres Textiles, which is a fiber farm in Rochester, Minnesota. And I just thought this was the most beautiful shade of like sea foam green that I have ever seen. And I knew this was the braid that I needed to have. Each of these are two ounces. I have no idea what I want to make with it yet, but I do know that I want to spin it up into like a two-ply yarn to get as much yardage as I can and maybe have it be like a fingering weight um, yarn. These are um, Tease Water Sheep Locks, which is a fiber that I have not spun with yet, but it feels so like luxurious. <laughs> Um, and I can tell right off the bat that it has a very long staple length. I don't know exactly how long it is, but it's like super long. I, you probably can't see this. Um, 
So it'll be really fun to spin with. I don't know if I've spun with something with this long of a staple length yet, but I am excited. So I'll be adding this to my list of things that I need to spin. I haven't actually spun on my wheel for quite some time, so I will be excited to kind of get back into the groove of that with this. <laughs> I have one more little bit of acquisition to show you and I did lie when I said that the rest of it is going to be knitting because this technically isn't for knitting but it is still some yarn. And that is these three cones here. And these are going to be for a weaving project. So um, if you may remember that I ended up buying a floor loom this summer because I got a deal of a lifetime that I couldn't pass up and I knew eventually I would want to get into weaving, but um, I wasn't quite ready for it yet. Plus I'm very intimidated by the whole process of it. Just the act of setting up the loom itself just seems so complicated to me. Um, but I ended up getting a monthly subscription to School of Sweet Georgia and I've been learning a ton on there on how to use the loom and I've reached a point where I need to get hands on with it. Like you can watch so many videos until you need to just like go for it. So I ended up getting a beginner hand towel kit from an online website called Just Yarn and I think they um, are primarily like a weaving yarn supplier. Very aesthetically pleasing website. Um, it's very fun to shop. They're kind of like a pearl soho but for weaving. <laughs> and um, so yeah, so like I said, I'm just gonna do basic hand towels and I wasn't feeling very creative as far as pairing colors together, so I just got the exact colors that the kit came in. So it came with a kit, so I have these three cones, which is the Beam Cotton. Yeah, Beam Organic Cotton in Natural, Lemon, and Dandelion are the colors that I'm using for it. And it says that it should create two hand towels with these. So I'm excited to just dive in and get into it. I was going to do it this weekend because um, Mitch is out of town. He's up in the UP of Michigan mountain biking. So I had the whole house to myself this weekend, but I still didn't get around to setting up the dang loom. <laughs> but I have a whole like, eight months of inside season ahead of me and so I think I'll have more than enough time to get going on this. That is all of the knitting that I have. I have been leaning in hard to the fall season this year. I started fall like September 5th aka the day after Labor Day. That's when my fall starts and I've been listening to a ton of like autumnal audiobooks. I've been watching Gilmer Girls. I've been cooking soups and baking. Today I have plans to make a white chicken chili corn chowder, which I'm very excited to eat. Um, but I've been having a great time and I hope you are too. If you made it this far, thank you so much. Full disclosure, I actually recorded this entire podcast last week, but my camera kept focusing on this candle and not my face and I just could not post a blurry video. <laughs> So I had to start this all over again and it's double the work. And so again, if you made it this far, thank you so much. I appreciate you being here and I'm happy you're here. If you like what you see, please give it a thumbs up. That really helps my channel out a lot. And if you're new here, welcome. I hope you want to stick around and you can do so by subscribing. That way you won't miss out on any future content that I put out. But I hope you are also having a very cozy fall so far and we'll chat next time. Bye!